Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and I am here by myself because we're going to talk about the new Masters of the Universe Revolution show. And Neon, quite frankly, doesn't even have two craps to give about Kevin Smith or the new show. And he didn't even want to do the video again because he thinks it's a bunch of dog crap. Um, so you're just getting me today. Uh, we're going to talk about the fact that uh, they're making sure now that everybody knows He-Man is going to be heavily involved in the show, that he's in a lot of the episodes, so people don't feel like they've been, you know, bait and switched and getting angry. And so they're double, they're doing, they're, they're really doubling down on this to make sure that they're getting it out with the promotion that He-Man is in the show a lot. It's, it's about He-Man this time, guys. Um, but we were just lying, don't you know? We just lied about everything we said. So we're gonna talk about that. Before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. If you do, you'll get a woohoo, woohoo. And if you're a hater who's ass mad that I don't like your show, you're gonna get a fuck you. So what's going on is I did the video the other day and I was just talking about the show and you know what had happened. And I said, you know, I'm hoping they learn some lessons. It looks really, really good. As far as the animation's concerned, the trailer, look, the trailer looks good, but we saw this before where the trailer looked good and then we know what happened. And you know, plus I'm still pissed at Kevin Smith because he didn't even really say sorry. But I said, you know, if you're allowed to like it, if you if you like the original, the revolution, revelation, you're allowed to like it, that's cool. You're completely allowed to like it. I have absolutely no problem with you liking it. The problem I have is when people are just not allowed to not like the show. You are not allowed to not like this. And there are some people who are personally getting so pissed that I do not like this show. And we're gonna talk about that too. So what set this video off was the whole discussion about somebody getting mad that I don't like the show. And then this person here, um, Adam Mirabilis, had said that there's an article because the bosses of the show are you know, basically out there saying, hey, there's lots of He-Man and they're doing damage control, which is exactly what they're doing. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, to back it up again, for those who don't know, which I don't know how you wouldn't know, back when this whole thing started, um, we had said that we had gotten a uh, script, we had gotten rumors. Again, rumors are rumors. Um, no one said it was completely factual or anything else. That was just what we were hearing. We posted a tweet, Neon posted a tweet in passing. It wasn't even worth us doing a video on because we thought it was so insignificant saying that we're hearing this, if it's true, it's probably not gonna go the way they want. Not a good idea. And because of that, um, Kevin Smith got really, really pissed and then descended from on high to, to learn us. And what we did was we said, okay, well, you know, we'll take your word for it because if it's not true, you're gonna look like a dumbass. And um, it can't, a lot of it came to pass because it did seem like they were setting up Andra and Tila at the beginning. And when they do these shows, I'm pretty sure actually that Revolution was probably greenlit at the same time as Revelation. They're probably one big order because you're talking like what, 20 some episodes, which is like one season normally split into quote unquote Netflix seasons, which are like five episodes or whatever. And they probably were done around the same time because they've been working on this one for a while now. They were already working on it before it even got announced. So I think they were greenlit at the same time. Um, it is interesting to me though, because things can change. Like there was a big gap between the quote unquote seasons for um, revolu Revelation, oh, so many R's. And you can totally have changed things. So it really did seem like they were setting up Andra and Tila at the beginning of the show. Other um, people that are reviewers said that they thought that was what was going on. People were very upset because they thought they were queer baited when that did not happen. I still stand by that because that is exactly how it came across. And the person who gave us this, you know, talked to us about the script didn't give us a script because we said no. The person that talked to us about the script said this is like the first couple, two or three episodes. They didn't see the whole show. But what they're hearing was that he man was sidelined for Tila, which is true. He was sidelined for Tila for the show. They even admit that in this article and they said that they were gonna do that at PowerCon. So that shouldn't have been a surprise to everyone. The problem was most people don't read the, the news about this. They didn't see the announcement for PowerCon and the showrunners didn't make an effort to make sure they clarified what the show was gonna be about. I think if they had said, hey, look, 
what happens if Tila, if, if, uh, Tila has to take over because He-Man's sidelined and the other masters have to step up because He-Man's not there? People might not have watched it, but I think that people would have been a lot more, um, you know, lenient on easier on it. They would have been, their expectations would have been set and I think they would have, you know, come into it a little bit differently. But they didn't do that. So it is what it is. But I have said repeatedly, you're allowed to like this show. Well, after I did the video last time, some little bitch boy is so mad, is so absolutely angry that I didn't like the show. Because I had said to people that they said they didn't watch it, I said, well, you don't have to watch something to know if, you, if, you're, if it's good or not, or if you're going to like it. You know, that's what trailers are for. They have a trailer, you watch a trailer, you decide, hey, am I going to watch this, this show or this movie or not? Based on the trailer, based on things you're hearing, based on different things. You can, you can make that decision that you don't like something based on those things. Okay. And this person is so pissed because, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, you can't make an informed decision unless you've watched all of it, 100% all of it. Um, but informed decision, decision means you agree with them. The joke is I watched the entire show. I watched all of it and I still didn't like it. And I said this to this, this little dickwad repeatedly that I watched the entire thing, but Neon did not watch the entire thing because he didn't give two shits about it. And this little, this little idiot keeps going on that we had, well, Clownfish TV admitted they didn't watch it. No, watch the entire thing, watch it. And I'm guessing from, from there getting so mad that they have watched every episode we've ever done of Clownfish TV because, I mean, they can't have an opinion, an informed opinion about our show unless they've watched every episode, 100%, because, you know, that's how this works. You can't, you can't have an opinion on something by watching an episode or, or trailer. You have to watch the entire thing and all of it um, to know and be able to make an informed opinion on, on the show. And I said that I had repeatedly, I watched the whole thing, this dumbass keeps going around saying that I didn't. And then, you know, I just basically said what I said here, where you're allowed to make, you're allowed to, to not like something just based on trailers. And he's having a hissy about that. And don't you know, we only got big because Kevin Smith said something to us. Now, as Neon pointed out, if we were going to pick a fight with somebody for clout, we sure as hell wouldn't pick Kevin Smith, whose career peaked in like the like 1990s. You know, we wouldn't, 1998, why would we pick a fight with him? And we didn't really go up that much, but I just think it's funny. He's so mad, but apparently it's not just, you know, it, there's a reason why people are concerned about this show. And as much as he wants to say, it's not true. It is true because they have to do damage control here. Now masters of the universe bosses promised lots of He-Man and Netflix's revolution as they defend his absence in last chapter. If everybody was on board with it and no one thought it was weird and it wasn't impacting your numbers, why would you have to do a, a whole article about and defending the absence? Why? You wouldn't have to. You'd just be putting the new show out and being like, yeah, everybody loves it. Yay. They're not. They're making sure everybody knows that He-Man's going to be heavily in this new show and that, you know, here's why we did what we did last time, guys. You know, just, just here's why we did what we did. I thought it, it didn't affect it. I thought people you know, loved it either way and, and that it's just a, a vocal minority who didn't like this show. Never mind that the numbers on the trailers are not good. This trailer came out nine days ago. And after nine days, one, there's 14,000 down votes to 13,000 up votes. And there's only been 426,000 views in nine days. That's it on, on this, this show. And now because of this, then all of a sudden this article comes out, you know, oh guys, He-Man's going to be in the show. I swear they're clearly worried or they wouldn't be putting this stuff out. They wouldn't need to. And then when you go to the trailer, you can see why they're worried because it's not going the way that some people think that it's going. So here's what the article says. This is coming from games radar. So credit to them. They have an exclusive guys. Ted Biaselli and Kevin Smith assure fans that Prince Adam is in three, now Prince Adam, they said, three and a half of four Masters of the Universe Revelations, five episodes. So he's in three and a half to four of the five episodes of the show. So like 75% of the show he's in, okay? So they're talking about when the first half of Revelation premiered, fans were not pleased, some fans were not pleased. He-Man, it turns out, was barely in it, while Sorceress Tila took over the series' central character. They did say that at PowerCon before the show came out. That was, they did, they did say that. 
Now, in the run-up to the new outing revolution, the Netflix show's bosses have promised fans the character will feature much more in the fresh batch of episodes. You know, oh, no, everything's fine. No one, no one, everybody's watching it. No one, no one's mad at us. Damage control. This is a story that's going to explore what it means to be He-Man when a new responsibility falls on Adam, which we know what it is from the trailer. Um, Ted Biaselli tells SFX Magazine in the new issue, which features Halo Season 2 on the cover. Hot damn, that's a twofer on that one. I think it's really interesting to explore what it's like when, as an adult, you, you know what you want to do, and your parents also have expectations for you. How do you reconcile with that? I mean, that's a fair thing. I mean, a lot of us have been there, you know. We do it with an eye towards making sure fans know that He-Man is in three and a half of four out of five episodes, he adds teasingly. He is He-Man in this show. I'm sorry, in the show. But I thought he was He-Man last time. I thought you didn't do that. I thought it wasn't a bait and switch. I thought that's not what happened. Uh, which is it? Following the events of Revelation, Revolution sees He-Man try and thwart newly mechanized Skeletor's plan to attack Eternia using the might of the motherboard. When he's not going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the bulky bag of bones, the blonde beefcake, who writes this, finds himself struggling to pick between the scepter or the sword. God, you know what? I really hate when my blonde beefcakes can't pick between their scepter or sword. You know, just pick one and get it over with. And a, li and a life as either the king or the champion. Oh, God. De decisions, you know. Elsewhere, Tila sets off on a mission to learn more about... So she's Tila's off on her own again. More about snake magic in order to rebuild a magic realm and help He-Man hold off the greatest threat attorney has ever faced, Horde Empire leader Hordak. Okay, a couple things here. I think it's cool that they're doing the snake magic and the, the snake or the snake uh, armor and all that because that makes sense. I mean, it... it that's cool. I'm glad they're doing that. Um, I think it's cool they're bringing in Hordak. I, I hope they don't ruin him too much, but it's cool they're bringing in Hordak. I'm not really sold on Skeletor being what he is this time, but it's cool they're bringing Hordak in. I do like that. I do like the snake armor on Tila. I think that's a solid choice. Why, Baselli, fellow EP Rob David, and showrunner Kevin Smith look to have taken the, the backlash on board. What backlash? There's no backlash. Everybody loved it. Clownfish TV is liars. Not, you know, they, they didn't make shit up. And, and it's a lie that people, you know, don't like the show that much and didn't like the last time. It's a complete lie, I tell you. Um, why do you have to, why do you have to, to say that? Um, they said that uh, the backlash on board had adjusted the ongoing story accordingly. So they, they, they admit, we adjusted the ongoing story according to the backlash. And they're doing a whole article over damage control. Again, they adjusted the ongoing story accordingly because of the backlash, which also proves that things are changed depending on the audience. So when we said Tila and Andra were probably a couple that might have been the case when it started, I think it changed by the second half because of the fan backlash. They admit they've been changing things based on fan reaction. Okay, so the later has no regrets about having He-Man take a backseat in Revelation. Kevin Smith, that's the later. Kevin Smith has no uh, no regrets. Kevin Smith hasn't, he says that. Kevin Smith's just one giant regret. So, Smith, I know there are people that went after Revelation for putting Tila first or whatever, but we didn't. Tila was as much a part of the story as she's always been a part of the story. Tila has always been important in He-Man, Masters of the Universe shows. Always. She's always been a main character, always been in all the episodes or most of the episodes, always been, you know, pretty strong you know, personality in the shows. That is true. But the difference is you made sure you called it Masters of the, of the Universe instead of He-Man. And you basically took He-Man out of his own show to make it the Tila show. And if you had, you know, tempered expectations ahead of time, it probably would have been okay. But you didn't. And the fact that you were so afraid the fans wouldn't watch your show that you kind of just lied by omission. And then, you know, the implication being that you don't think people would watch a Tila only show, which is kind of sexist because, you know, they won't watch a show if it's about a woman. Um, which part do you want to, you know, it, it's all a bunch of bullshit, you know? I thought it would be a cool aspect of storytelling to remove the center of our universe 
like he took himself out because he's the center of his own universe for a few episodes and then bring him back. That wasn't me going, let's break this franchise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By any stretch of the imagination. <sighs> Damage control. Damage control. People who wanted to attack the show were like, they killed He-Man. But it wasn't as if Mattel or Netflix were saying, here, man, go kill a franchise for us. No, they didn't say that. But that's what you did anyway. And that's why we have damage control. And that's why there's 14,000 downvotes to 13,000 upvotes and hardly any views on the new Masters of the Universe Revolution trailer. And hence why you have this article. But do go on. Um, he's like, that's why we brought you here. Naturally, He-Man was always going to come back. Everything we did in He-Man's absence when we brought him back still tied in heavily with the lore. Continues Smith. Yeah, Battle Boner, Skele Bell Battle Boner Skeletor was total lore right there. He's got a power down his mega dick so that, you know, that evil Lynn can steal his power. I'm a person who has enjoyed a franchise or two in his lifetime. Was this before or after you made a career hitting on Star Wars? Anyway, and naturally I enjoy it when they respect the things they have gone, have gone before. We really went out of our way to honor what it was that people loved about Masters of the Universe. What? Really? What did you go out of your way to honor? What did you go out of you, you killed Orko. You killed He-Man. You killed a bunch of the old Masters of the Universe characters off. I don't even still know where, you know, where's Fisto and, um, uh, Champ, Champ, or Clamp Champ, where are they still? You know, they were like, the, the afterlife's gone. Where the hell are they? You know, the one black character, yeah, 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 kind of put him in purgatory. And you honored it so well. And then Eva Lynn, you know, has always been bad. But now she's kind of good. And everything she's ever done is, is completely, you know, forgotten. Because, you know, she's she's good now. Ish. And I, you didn't, you, you honored everything that came before. Okay, good. Sounds good. Um, I'm glad you respected everything. Uh, everybody involved had skin in the game as to whether this would be a reinvention of the franchise or a spiritual continuation of the franchise. And we were all in the later camp. No, I would say the CG, the CG He-Man was more of a spiritual successor than what this is. And look, again, I want to make it very clear. If you like the new show, you were allowed to like the new show. There were elements of it I did like of the new show. I think it was beautifully animated. The animation's beautiful. I didn't like Tila's design at all, but the beautiful the animation was quite pretty. And I there were several elements of it I liked, but there was a lot more I didn't like. And apparently, I am not alone in that. Given this, I'm gonna keep going on. Sorry, this is gonna be a long video. Poor Neon is gonna have to edit this whole thing. Um. So he goes on, all the usual suspects return from Masters of the Universe Revolution, except for Clamp Champ and Fisto and all them, with Mark Hamill. And then he starts, starts you know, name dropping everybody. And now we got, you know, John Delancey's going to be in it. And William Shatner's going to be in it. Um, they're basically like, we could, like, I know, we'll get everybody back. But we'll, we'll bring all these people in that they like. Like, they like John Delancey. They like him a lot. We'll bring him in. And they like William Shatner. So let's bring William Shatner in. And they're just trying to name names of people to try to bring them in. Um, they replaced Sarah Michelle Gellar as Tila, which is probably for the best because she was sh awful. Awful as Tila. Great as Buffy. Terrible as Tila. I'm sorry. One works, one doesn't. And they're talking about how the show is going to release on January 25th and blah, 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 blah. Again, people don't care. That's your problem. That's why you're doing damage control now. And you're all like trying to walk it back. Like, oh, we, we didn't do anything wrong. You just misunderstood. It's, you know, but we have to do an article to try to damage control because, you know, but it wasn't us, it was you. But here's an article telling you why we're going to make sure He-Man he is really, re is really important in the show and in it a lot. Um, and here's why we decided to make these dumbass decisions as last time, but we're going to fix it this time. And we admit that we adjust the story according to, to the, how fans react. We adjust the story according to how fans react. Anyway, I think it's funny. And to my personal stalker, um, you sit and spin, bitch. Uh, please like and subscribe. I will talk to you later. Bye.